one minute after. And uh, I think we have, we have everybody? I think so. Um, I, I know we have a quorum. I don't know if we have yes. everyone. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. I'll call the meeting to order. Uh, and I will read our preamble here. Um, notwithstanding anything, any provision in the EDA bylaws to the contrary, as permitted under Albemarle County's Continuity of Government Ordinance, Chapter 1283 of the 2020 Acts of the General Assembly and the resolution of this body adopted on April 21, 2020, we are holding this meeting by real-time electronic means with no authority member physically present at a single central location. All authority members are participating electronically. This meeting is being held in accordance with section six of the county's continuity of government ordinance. All authority members will identify themselves and state their general physical location by electronic means during the roll call, which we will hold next. This meeting is being recorded and will be uploaded to the county's website. The public has real-time audiovisual access to the meeting over Zoom and real-time audio access over telephone, both as provided in the lawfully posted meeting notice. The public is invited to offer live comment during the meeting's public comment period. Comments are limited to three minutes and must be germane to the matters on today's agenda. The public is also invited to send questions, comments, and suggestions to the authority through the county's economic development office at any time. So, um, Richie, you want to call the roll? I will do that. Um, let's see, Director Long? Uh, present in the city of Charlottesville. Director Ray? Present in Albemarle County. Director Shreve? Present in Albemarle County. Let's see, Director Munson? Present in the city of Charlottesville. Uh, Director Imhoff? Present in Albemarle County. And Director McNaughton? Present in Troy, Virginia. And Supervisor McKeel? Present in the outstanding magisterial district of Jack Jewett in Albemarle County. <laughs> I wish I'd work from home today. <laughs> uh, Mr. Chair, we have, uh, we have a quorum. All right. Um, one, of the, one of the things at, at the end I'd like to talk about to the extent you know anything, Richie, is what our plans are or how meetings are going to go forward after the governor's order expires yes, today. Um, yes, sir. Uh, so any any comments from the public, Jennifer? We do not have anybody that has signed up. Um, if anybody in the audience would like to speak, you can indicate now by raising your hand. We do not have anybody. All right, then on to new business. So I guess, Richie, you're leading the discussion on this. Uh, I, I am. Um, I understand that um, Mr. Childress is in the, I don't know what we call it, the audience. And um, he, he's involved. Uh, he's from Scott Croner. I don't know if he should be um, promoted to, is the right word, participant? Yes. Okay. <clears throat> now, anybody okay. else I need to bring in? There are two more out there. Uh, Tara Boyd indicated that she may, she, she may join, but I didn't see her in the, uh, in the audience. She's here. Okay, she should be promoted also. Okay. okay. All right, and Tara's with the, she's with the law firm of Boyd and Sipe. They're both, um, they, they represent Habitat and the Piedmont Housing Alliance. Um, and uh, and uh, um, I, I will rely on them. They have greater expertise in, in terms of the uh, um, determination certificate. Um, and so I will they will be available to um, correct any errors that I make and also to uh, um, to answer any questions that the board members may have. Um, but I'll just start, um, I'll start right off with kind of a recap of the, um, this involves the um, Habitat for Humanities redevelopment of the Southwood neighborhood. Um, the Board of Supervisors and uh, the EDA, they have both entered into a performance agreement, a multi-year um, performance agreement with, with Habitat for the redevelopment. Um, just by way of, of uh, update, um, the Southwood neighborhood, it's 120 acres off of Old Lynchburg Road. Um, the, the, I think what's attractive for the Economic Development Authority is that it does lie in an opportunity zone. Um, it was reported there are 80 developable, developable acres um, right now, it involves 341 mobile homes and 1,500 residents. 
um, the redevelopment plan is going to uh, uh, is going to work towards 700 to 800 um, new dwelling units. 400 of those units will be affordable dwelling units. Um, we're looking at about 100 to 250 million dollar total investment in that neighborhood development, um, and it's it's in uh, two phases. Phase one involves uh, 32 and a half acres. Um, phase two involves what um, what you you will recognize as kind of the the, the mobile home park at this point in time. Um, the, the plan is to develop phase one first um, because then that will not that won't displace the residents um, who are now in the mobile homes. Um, so um, there are uh, I say phase one, but there's also two the, the project is divided into two areas. Um, and I, I don't know if it's called Block B or Part B, um, uh, but in any event, um, Part B is going to include apartments, commercial development, and oh, you've got the Block B there is going to involve apartments, commercial, and community center. And then Part A down um, to your left is going to be attached housing units. Um, I don't know the exact um, location of the four acres, I believe it's to the left of, I don't know if that Hickory Road coming up there, um, which is going to be, uh, which is going to be apartments. Um, the development is looking to develop at least 80 affordable um, dwelling units. Um, in, in terms of the, uh, in terms of the performance agreement, um, this does involve the early stages of the performance agreement. Um, uh, in, in terms of the full length of it, um, they're looking at uh, the county is looking at 3.2 million dollar investment. I will note um, that none of the EDA's funds are, um, are are going to be put up. This is the EDA is serving as a conduit. Um, all uh, all grants and all tax rebates will um, be channeled um, from the county of Albemarle. Um, so um, that just kind of gives a, a background on it. The um, agreement does have several milestones. Again, I indicated this was the early, the early stages of, of, of the performance agreement. Um, one of the milestones um, that was contemplated was, um, was that uh, Habitat um, would either develop these 80, 80 plus uh, affordable dwelling units or actually have a third party um, that would come in and, and do that. And, and as I understand it, this is, um, and from my recollection of discussions before the planning commission and before this board is that in order for this um, project to be viable, Habitat would sell a portion of it um, to a third party who would develop, um, would develop uh, the property. Um, I understand this is part of that. Um, I'll let the attorneys correct me if I'm wrong, but regardless, it was, it was, um, it was contemplated that this would happen. Um, and so Piedmont Housing Alliance is that third party that's coming in to purchase the four plus acres and to apply for the low income housing tax credits for those residences um, and then develop them. Um, so that is uh, a milestone in terms of the performance agreement. Let's see. Um, so uh, this is somewhat foreign to me. So a lot of what I do is, is more learning than anything. Um, so we've been presented uh, with a determination certificate that has been shared uh, with the board members. Um, and so I, 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 Mr. Bowling may be able to comment on this or the attorneys um, as to the necessity of it. We presume, um, uh, as Mr. Bowling uh, explained to me, that it is um, in, in terms of federal tax regulations or federal housing regulations, um, this is necessary in order to um, close on the uh, to close on the sale and the development. Um, so that's why we're being asked because we're a party, even though we, we're serving as a conduit, we are a party to the agreement. And so our endorsement um, would, be, would be necessary. Um, <clears throat> what um, we have developed, um, and I think as uh, Jennifer has shared with the board are essentially two resolutions. Um, one resolution um, indicates that, that, uh, that this board will authorize um, the chair to endorse the letter um, once the Board of Supervisors has approved it and once um, the county attorney has approved uh, the letter as to form. The second resolution, um, which was offered as a suggestion and, and counsel of Mr. Bowling, is that um, is kind of pre pre presents a, a reservation in the sense that um, the EDA 
would uh, would uh, go ahead and, and authorize um, Don to uh, sign the letter, but it would include a reservation indicating that um, the EDA has not made um, has not made an independent um, determination or verification of the contents of the letter, but instead is relying upon uh, the board of supervisors and county staff um, to do that. So essentially, we're we're following in the footsteps of the board of supervisors. Um, to some extent, I, I think that's that that's more accurate. Um, so I, I think that's the way to go if um, if uh, Mr. Childress and Miss Boyd um, don't have any objection. I think that's the most conservative approach. But I'll let them I'll let them uh, address that. Um, I will say, in terms of uh, in terms of the information we've received um, from county staff as to the contents of the letter, Stacy Pethia is uh, that the housing director. Um, I I'm not, I'm not going to swear by her title, but she does housing for the um, community development department. Um, she has indicated to me um, by email that she has no issues with the letter. Um, I will say that um, this, the attorney for the planning commission has had um, some comments on it. Um, and the significant comment is on page two, um, the first uh, uh, clause number two um, that indicates the um, the 30 year minimum period of affordability may be shortened in the event of the sale of the properties acquired by foreclosure and other circumstances. Um, I can't confirm, but I suspect that that's, that is consistent with federal law and federal regulation. It is not entirely inconsistent with the agreement um, so that um, the board of supervisors um, would have to make a concession in terms of the agreement. The performance agreement just states 30 years outright as a minimum period. Um, it doesn't discuss um, the it doesn't uh, discuss the, um, the the federal regulations, um, but that's one thing that that has been pointed out. Um, I don't know how that's going to be resolved or if it even needs to be resolved. Um, in terms and, of oh, oh go ahead, Jim. I'm sorry. Jim, did you Jim, have go ahead? I do. I looked at this and contacted Richie and. and uh, um, as soon as I saw this, I represent other conduit entities. And when I've seen this language in the past, I've consistently said for the, the, the board who I represent here, uh, the EDA members, that uh, you really don't want to be certifying the facts when you're not, uh, don't have any independent verification of those facts. Okay. And so Richie made the change in the resolution, but I also suggested to him, and I think actually I, I pretty much insist if you all want to avoid any exposure in this case that the board should ask that the determination certificate be changed to indicate that only the county is certifying as to the various factual allegations that are set forth in the letter. And the board accepts those um, certifications as a conduit entity relying solely on the correctness of those certifications um, by, the, by the county having made no independent verification. The reason for that is you want it in both places is you never know where these letters are gonna end up or, or when it's going to become a problem. And um, I, I'm just guessing, I'm assuming this is for uh, housing, for financing or tax credits or such as that. But uh, uh, if a dispute arises in the future, my role is to ensure that the board members don't become entangled in any future dispute. And the easiest way to do that is to make sure you stick to your conduit role in anything that you sign. I think that change can be made easily to the determination certificate too, Richie. I'm not seeing it. Um, I, I believe, yeah, and the second resolution indicated that um, the approval would be conditioned on that change being made in the letter. Okay. Um, so the, 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 and so just in terms of closing, this follows up with um, Mr. Bowling's comments in, in terms of exposure. Um, so um, he's right in terms of limiting the exposure. I, I will say also that um, the, that, that we're just a, a conduit and a pass-through. Um, so that limits our exposure to some extent. Um, we haven't put any EDA funds at risk in this project. Um, all the funds and all the rebates are coming from the county. And finally, I'll add that um, Habitat um, through their director. Um, I, I know when we approved the performance agreement, Mr. Ray and, and the board insisted that there be a hold harmless um, addendum um, made to that performance agreement that was done and Habitat executed that. So um, they, they had indicated they would hold us harmless and indemnify um, for anything that arises out of this performance agreement. All that being said, I agree with Mr. Bowling that the safest and most conservative route is to go with that second resolution. 
Um, so, Tara, and I will, Hunter, welcome oh. to the, the meeting. Yep. Richie, did you have more? I was going to just see. If they no, had no, no, sir. I was about to to um okay. to to offer them up. Yeah. Well, I don't get to do much, so I should at least get to invite people <laughs> and thank them for coming to the meeting. So, uh, so do you all have anything you want to add to to Richie's comments or or Jim's discussion? Uh, Connor, you want to go first? Sure. And my internet's a little unstable, so I apologize if I come across as being digital. Um, first of all, I wanted to thank you all for taking this up so quickly. I know that uh, it's sort of just at your plate, and uh, it's important to us that you get a chance to look at it um, and consider it. Uh, from Habitat standpoint, uh, Southwood's obviously a very big, involved development. Um, we've appreciated having the EDA support us through it. And one of the main points of this letter, honestly, is to make sure we're not doing anything right now that upsets the EDA or damages this performance agreement, which we, uh, or which Habitat worked so hard with the county and the EDA to put in place. Um, the second thing that we're trying to do is to make sure that our partner PHA has what they need in the letter to uh, be able to do their project. I think everyone's intent is that LIHTC, uh, um, sorry, low-income housing tax credit units be put at the beginning of this development. And PHA, I think it's fair for them to be able to step in and not have any unknown liabilities they're stepping into. Um, I'll let Tara now speak to more of the PHA specific parts of the project. Yeah, thanks, Connor. So I'm counsel for PHA, the uh, purchaser of this parcel right up at the entrance on Hickory Street, where uh, a multifamily uh, low-income housing rental project is going to be developed using uh, federal low-income housing tax credits. So PHA has already applied for those tax credits, and they should get um, notice of final approval of the allocation. I hope, I'm not sure I'm using the right terminology. Um, probably mid next month, uh, depending on when Virginia Housing uh, publishes those results. But um, they are uh, very much in the running for those credits um, and are pretty confident that they're going to get them, which is great because the performance agreement that Habitat signed with the county and county EDA contemplates a chunk of the um, uh, affordable housing being provided as, quote, LIHTC units, low-income housing tax credit union units. And so PHA is in a position to build all of those units. Your performance agree agreement requires at least 80 LIHTC units. Uh, um, PHA is currently tracking at about 120 LIHTC units. So we'll be able to go above and beyond the minimum, which is good. Um, so as the counsel for the purchaser of this property, um, I'm, I have to help PHA do its due diligence. And PHA is a stranger to the performance agreement, right? It's between Habitat or rather Habitat's um, uh, affiliate Southwood Charlottesville and the county and the county EDA. So we reviewed this and we saw some things that we wanted to get comfort on to make sure that we weren't stepping into liabilities that either we weren't intended to have or that didn't make sense for us. And one of the things that jumped out was this description of the LIHTC ADUs, the 80 LIHTC ADUs and this 30 year requirement. Well, in order to get the low income housing tax credits for these 80 units, the federal regs governing those credits only, um, they provide a, a 15 year uh, point during the affordability period when uh, the, the um, ownership can turn over. Um, and they also provide that foreclosure potentially can uh, um, shorten the period of affordability. But assuming no foreclosure and assuming um, PHA remains in control of the project, which is the plan, uh, the affordability, affordability period would be 30 plus years. Um, so, you know, we kind of read this as just almost more of a drafting conflict. Uh, the plan is a 30 year affordability period. Using the LIHTC, there are a couple of technicalities where it could be shortened. Um, it, it, that's just 
kind of part of the landscape. So I think both Habitat and PHA would like the comfort that what we're doing uh, is consistent with the performance agreement. The other stuff in there is really just kind of like making sure that we're not missing anything, you know, that the performance agreement is still in effect, that some of the terminology used in the performance agreement that was a little bit different from what's in the county rezoning approval, that they're talking about the same stuff. Um, so, so that's kind of where we're going with this, but happy to answer questions. I have a question. Can you, can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, when you say you're tracking at 120 units, does that mean you've, you have a commitment to, to build that many from fo uh, the developer, a builder who will ultimately receive the, uh, the tax credit? Is that, is that what you mean when you say that? No, um, and we haven't even started, I don't believe PHA has started yet the site planning process. Right. So the total number of units also is gonna depend on county approvals and entitlements. And we are way at the beginning of the process here. Right. So um, that'll be somewhat up to you guys, um, but there are definitely investors who will take the credits. Well, that's, that's why I asked that question because as you probably know well, the uh, 2017 Revenue Act changed the uh, desirability of the tax credits quite dramatically. Yeah. Um, and I just didn't know how you viewed that landscape, uh, you know, uh, in the in the coming months and years. Yeah, I, I'm going to leave that to smarter heads than mine. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm not a tax counsel and I'm not a, a credit broker. Um, yeah. Tara, what I Tara, how are you today, Jim Bowling? What I'm I good. what I proposed, you understand what I'm saying is that the EDA is merely a conduit. They don't oh, know yeah. really squat about any of the things the county's certifying to. That's why we have the county staff, and that's their job. So what I want to do is change the determination certificate so that it reads that the county certifies to all those things, and then the EDA joins in to accept the county certification as may be necessary, but with the understanding they've made no independent, uh, have no knowledge of and made no independent verification of the facts that are set out therein, something to that effect. I've done it before with other federal funding, tax credit funding devices where I have conduit entities and hasn't caused any problems. And that's what I'm proposing in this case. We're punting on first down. <laughs> So, just Tara, so, yeah. Um, so, is this is this a certificate or letter that you're going to provide to somebody else, or is this just for your own confirmation? Um, it's just it's just for PHA's confirmation. I mean, it's possible that in the course of our financing and tax credit diligence, um, we may have lenders who want to look at it. But again, we're so far so early in that process that. Really, what I wanted to do was address things that stuck out as, um, you know, things I was curious about. I mean, I, I guess my question is, do does the EDA really just need to say, we're agreeing to whatever the county says? I mean, do we even need to sign onto the letter other than just to say, you know, the county is saying that they agree with all these things and we're we're agreeing that that they can do it? or we agree we're, we're consenting to the change, but because um, it, it's really, all of these issues are really their issues, not the EDA's issues. I'm wondering if we can make it even less, um, if, if we really need to be part of it other than just saying that we consent or we agree as a party to the agreement. Which is what I'm saying. Second, yeah. second. and that, that's what we're trying to do with the second resolution, correct? Well, it is, but you need to make sure that whoever signs this determination certificate signs a change certification certificate. You don't want to, I wouldn't put my John Henry on it the way it's written now, just relying upon the resolution. The, the document itself is going to have to be changed before I would want, if I was a board member, to be signing the thing. And this, you know, this is, this is, not, a, this is not a high risk item, but 
what the goal here is to keep what the, whoever signs this thing from ending up in some kind of legal proceeding four years from now, sitting there and having this thing waved in front of their face and said, well, why'd you sign this thing, sir, if you didn't want to, you didn't know anything about it. And you say, well, that's not likely to happen. And I assure you, it does happen. I, I, I would say, well, my lawyer told me it was okay to sign. Yeah. Uh, but you're now telling me not to. So, <laughs> so, so the board the bowling told me to sign. So Jennifer has shared the second resolution with the board members. I know with a, a and a, and you've been um, hit with a lot of documents, but the the resolution um, as it's written it. says that the chair will be authorized to execute the determination certificate on behalf of behalf of the authority once it has been amended to reflect the authority relies on the board of supervisors and its staff to determine the appropriateness of the certificate and to independently verify the contents thereof. The authority has not independently determined the appropriateness of the certificate or verified its contents. And once it has been approved by the Board of Supervisors and approved as to form and content by the county attorney. So that's the second resolution. It, it authorizes Don to sign if the, if the letter is amended to reflect that. And I think that yeah, captured I, what Mr. Bowling was saying. Right. That should do it. That'll get all this. In other words, it'll say the county certifies and then have a paragraph at the end saying what Don and I have said. Yeah, I mean, I'm 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 totally fine with that. I guess what I was suggesting is we could take an even further step back, but I don't want to mess things up anymore. Yeah. I don't, I'm certainly comfortable with that. Approach. Mask, uh, it's more, maybe it's more of a comment than a question, but I, I would just want the county to get a little bit more assurance on both the number of units because what I was seeing listed in the state ranking was for only phase one, it was like 62 units. So I'm hearing different unit numbers, which is a little worrying. And, and the 30 year, yeah, the 30 year really, I'd really like to pin that down because 15 and 30 is a big difference for it to suddenly leave potentially low income housing support and go out into the open market. So yeah, I'd love any, any more information or surety. So is the, has the board approved this yet? When are they going to act on it? No, they, they have not. Um, my understanding is they will act either the first or the second meeting of July that, um, that the developers or the parties were interested in having this finalized by July 15th. Okay, that's fine. I just, I mean, those, I understand what Kat's saying, but I also think those are really not our issues. Those are the board's issues to, to deal with. I mean, our issue is just, you That's know, right. what are we, That's and right. I don't think we have any control or decision-making over any of the, these particular. No, I don't, I don't disagree. I just made the minutes reflect. <laughs> we hope the board looks closely at the numbers and the time period. Yeah, Kat, can, if it's okay um, with the chair, can I speak to those concerns? Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, so I had the same question because I went on BHDA's site and looked at the rankings and was like, oh my God, there are only 60 units. Um, and so I <laughs> got in touch with my client and, and um, he, here's what he explained. Um, Southwood Apartments are planning, project is planning to have a total of 121 units. So we'll be in compliance with the performance agreement. The deal is what's called a 9-4 split deal, where a portion of the units, 70, are developed under a 9% LIHTC award, and the remaining units, 51, are developed concurrently under a 4% LIHTC award. The recent award, the recent award, the one that we're seeing on um, BHDA's or Virginia Housing's website, is only for the 9% 9 Southwood A portion of the project. The 4% Southwood B project will be submitted later this year since the 4% credits are non-competitive, we are assured to have this portion of the deal funded. So um, you guys don't have access to it, but in PHA's purchase and sale agreement with Habitat, we have a, um, a kick out if we don't receive the allocation of the competitive credits this summer, next month, which is why the, um, the July deadline is important to us. Uh, but we're comfortable enough going forward, knowing that we'll get the other chunk of credits in the non-competitive process, uh, if that gives you some comfort. It's, it's technical, <laughs> um, but that's the nature of these tax credit programs. 
And what uh, <clears throat> what does the four uh, percent LIHTC award uh, reflect? Uh, uh, less stringent requirements for affordability, uh, mm -hmm. or or something else altogether? It's the same affordability requirements. I think the amount of the credit is different. I see. But again, I'm getting a bit out of my real house here. I'm, I'm not a tax lawyer. <laughs> well, yeah, it is clear that the, the amount of the credit is different, but um, right. um, in compensation for a smaller credit, what does the uh, developer builder receive? Anything? That I do not know. And I don't know, it could be a supply issue because Virginia housing only gets a certain number of credits, federal credits to allocate every year. Right. So then it's just a question of salesmanship, whether you can use that portion to attract sufficient uh, developers. Are you interested in buying some tax credits? <laughs> <laughs> I think I can find some for you. No, no. <laughs> All right, um, any other questions? Comments? Uh, Tara, will you speak to the, the technical nature of the 15 year um, kick out effectively that we're, we're talking about, um, just so it's not lost, that this isn't an option really for PHA to take it out of affordability. This is a financing, financeability issue. Yeah, I was afraid you were gonna ask that. Hang on, let me, let me pull up my notes on that because and that's that's a treasury requirement, if I understand it, correct? So it's nothing you can avoid. If that's you're correct. It's, it's in yeah. the treasury regs. So. Yeah, if, you, if you're participating in LIHTC uh, program, you, you just can't avoid it, so. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I, don't, I don't see that as a big deal because that's just the way it is. Well, I guess it's only, it's only a big deal because the, the performance agreement has a different right. term. Right, right. So I think if the if the board as the board of supervisors says we understand that this is a you know subject to these other limitations, then I think that's that's fine because I think that's what Tara is looking for, right? Yeah, that's right. I, th I think the board's either got to tell us, yeah, we meant these to be LIHTC units, so the thirty year period is subject to the LIHTC regs. Or no, we didn't really mean these to be live tech units, and they are hard and fast, thirty-year, no kick out, or you know, no ifs, ands, or buts. It's one or the other because it it can't be both. Yeah, and then you have to figure out different ways to finance. Uh, right, and that's going to be tough. <laughs> that maybe means these units don't get built. Right. And Connor, forgive me, I'm probably speaking way out of school here. <laughs> Well, the, you know, the other thing, too, is when you're, uh, I've been a critic of tax credit programs for many years that go beyond housing and into many other areas. And one of the, the, you know, unavoidable problems is that they're all, they're often pinned on wishful thinking and hopes and dreams, you know. So <laughs> to some extent, when you, when you play this game, you've, you've got to uh, cast your fate to the wind a little bit uh, and hope that uh, there is no foreclosure or that there's no incentive to, for PHA to turn around and sell it to somebody else. Um, that just like the treasury regs, I, I see that as unavoidable. Yeah, and for what it's worth, I mean, PHA's reputation in this community, I think speaks for itself. Yes. It's developed a number of LIHTC projects. It's actually come in and been a 15 year buyer on a LIHTC project that I worked on a couple of years ago um, that kept the project affordable. So, you know, they, they're pretty committed to this. And, and this is sort of beside the point, but Tara or Connor, could you tell me uh, uh, when we look at the various phases uh, uh, in, the, in the prospective plans here, um, what percentage do you see being, uh, say, Section 8 uh, rental property and or uh, single family dwellings that might qualify for, you know, PHA down payment assistant programs or, or the VITA program or something like that. Do you have any ideas um, about how that will pan out? So 
I'm probably the best to speak to that. And I honestly don't have a good answer for it. I know Habitat is doing a significant number of Habitat built units that'll be, you know, long-term affordability as Habitat houses. I, I can't speak to the, the question about Section 8. I just don't know the answer. Yeah, and I don't have any intel on that either. I know PHA does use Section 8 at some of their developments, but again, I think we're too far out to speak to anything outside of this multifamily um, piece that they're taking. All right, um, anything else? Anybody else have any questions about this? I guess, um, Richie, I anything else to add? I just have a quick comment to follow up on um, Tara's comments and looking at the performance agreement, um, it, it, it indicates um, on page 12, the LIHTC ADU shall qualify as affordable housing for a minimum of 30 years. Um, I guess in terms of playing lawyer, if they apply and everything qualifies um, at that point, then they may satisfy that. Um, you know, in terms of drafting, does it mean qualify and remain or just qualify under federal reg? So I, I think there might be some wiggle room there and the board may determine that, yeah, we just meant that um, it has to qualify under the federal program for a minimum of, of 30 years. And so when the feds say, yeah, you get, you qualify, then that meets that, that condition. Or at a clause that's, you know, something like subject to LIHTC, yeah. um, Regu uh, regulations, treasury reg but I, department reg but, but But others will have to clarify what the what their the board's intention was and the party's right. intention and that, but it may, may very well just been once you qualify, you've met that provision. So um, is there a motion on the, um, was there a motion on any resolution, but specifically on the, uh, the amended resolution that that was provided this morning. So I have uh, I've worked fairly extensively with PHA and to a lesser extent with Habitat, and um, both of those organizations are they're uh, very respectable and fill a huge public need and and you know I, I all of my react all my interactions with them have been extremely favorable so um could i see the resolution resolution again sorry so i would like i would like to move that the economic uh development authority of county of Baltimore, virginia adopt the Recited, re recited resolution and authorize the chair to execute the determination certificate. Once it is amended to reflect accurately the authority's limited role as noted above, and once it has been approved by the Board of Sur Supervisors and approved by the county attorney as to form. Is there a second? Second. Oh, second. All right, second. Um, so is there any discussion on the motion? I guess that's a no on further discussion. So um, do you want to do a roll call vote on this? I'll do it. I'll do it. Aye. Let's see. Director Long. Aye. Director Ray. Aye. Director Shreve. Aye. Uh, Director Munson. Aye. Director Imhoff. Aye. And Director McNaughton. Aye. All right. All in favor? Thanks to, uh, to Connor and Tara for coming today and explaining what's going on, along with Richie uh, for, for that. Um, I appreciate everybody getting together to do this. So what I'm gonna suggest, uh, Richie, is that probably the best way to do this might be just a um, certificate from the county once the board has approved it that just says, we certified all these things and then our, our letter can say in reliance on the certificate, along with the, you know, the language that Jim has proposed, that's what we can put in the letter. So we're okay. just, we're just making the termination based on what we've been told. So, um, so after the board acts, then, then we'll have a document for you to sign. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Tara, does that work? Does that work for you all? Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. <clears throat> yep. Richie, if I may, 
um, having had the pleasure of working with both of these boards, oftentimes the board relies on uh, the EDA as subject matter experts to advise them in certain ways. So as a result, Don, I think myself, Richie, and Jennifer will uh, somehow compile the minutes or notes from this, try to take the salient points out and share those with the Board of Supervisor in some way, shape, or form if it's the will of the EDA. Sure. Mm -hmm. sure. Thank you. Good idea. Yeah. Um, so I have two other, I don't know if we have any unfinished business. Um, I do have two, um, two items. One, I was going to see if Richie can give us an update on what we know about future meetings in terms of Zoom and the change in the ordinance. And then um, the other piece is we may have another potential need for a special meeting. And I wanted to, um, to raise that and see what people's schedules were if we need to schedule another special meeting um, related to a bond. So why don't we go ahead and do that? I don't know uh, what is people. What are people's schedules for the next two weeks? <clears throat> are people around? Not around? Yep. Kat, where are you? Yeah. Are you? Every day is yeah. a different day, but I, I'm in Virginia <laughs> until July 19th. <laughs> yeah, I can probably juggle a lot of things. Okay. Yeah. Anybody on vacation in the next two weeks? I'll be in Wilmington, Delaware for about yeah. four, four or five days yeah. during that period, but I, I should still be able to okay. zoom in. Yeah, Steve? computer access is available. Okay, all right. So if we need to do that, we can round up a time. Okay, great. And are we having a July um, meeting? Because I think that's the one I'll be p potentially mm -hmm. off the grid. If we No, I time. think it was canceled, correct? Yeah, yeah, we canceled the July meeting because um, I am I'm gone too, so but apparently there was a bond that they wanted to put on the July meeting and just discovered that it wasn't on. It shouldn't take, it's a it's a refunding issue, so it shouldn't take long to resolve, but it, I wanted to go ahead and cooperate if we if people are around to have a quick meeting. So Jennifer will follow up and we'll try to schedule something if we need to. Uh, and then Richie on the, the meetings, what do you know in terms of future? So um, in, in terms of um, in terms of the county's um, willingness to support uh, uh, public meetings, it's my understanding that although the governor's um, declaration of an emergency or disaster is expiring as of midnight tonight, um, the county still has authority um, to maintain its disaster declaration for six more months. Um, the FOIA, um, FOIA electronic meeting um, statute, which goes into effect tomorrow, has been amended to allow um, to allow virtual meetings for um, for local boards and local authorities. Um, so the the plan is for July and for August. The expectation is to continue with the status quo that we'll be doing Zoom meetings. My understanding is that the uh, um, the uh, incident management team for the county. Um, has its eye um, to opening things up after Labor Day, but we don't have specifics on that. So the, the one comment I will say is that we will continue virtually um, until um, until at least after Labor Day. Um, I don't know if our disaster declaration continues if the county will be opening up and greeting or allowing uh, allowing public meetings in its its county office building. That's just an unknown at this time. Um, so okay. we'll just have to play it by ear. Richard, do you have any other insight just in terms of thought process? I mean, the world's never going back to where we were. And I do think that some form of virtual meetings from the standpoint of work life, environment, community engagement, is an important thing. <laughs> so well, is, is, is there I don't any discussion or is it like, how do we get back to where we were? <laughs> so that, que that question was raised as to whether the General Assembly would take that up during the special session that they're, they're going to meet in August. And the answer I received was that there's no indication that they're going to address that again. Um, but I mean, I, I hear you loud and clear. Um, my understanding is that public participation has increased dramatically. Um, I do know that there are difficulties in terms of um, in, in terms of conducting hybrid meetings, um, but in, in term it, it, the electronic participation is is um, really uh, it, it, it 
it's on the members of the board. Um, so um, public participation um, by electronic means, again, I'm not a tech expert, but that's something that can continue indefinitely. So there's nothing that prohibits us from receiving public comment electronically um, or by some form of Zoom or, or Teams meeting format. Uh, we just have to hash that out somehow. Okay. If something changes, I will let everyone know though. Okay, sounds good. Great, anything else, Roger, Jennifer, anything? All right, thanks everybody, I appreciate it. Thanks, Jim, good right. catch. Thanks. <laughs> thanks.